What's up, everyone? As always, we appreciate you hitting that download button. My guest company today has no catchy or risque graphics, believes in minimal quality ingredients, basically not a phone book of items, and most of all, they subscribe to full disclosure, transparent labels, which you know is big in my mind. As always, we'll talk the company, philosophy, products, and anything else the road takes us on. Allow me to introduce Rich Vellucci, Director of Marketing of Apollon Nutrition. Rich, welcome to the show. Sean, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for everybody who's listening. Uh, yes, I am with Apollo Nutrition. I'm the head of marketing. Um, we're going to just go through the company history and, and talk a little bit about the uh, different products and how we kind of differentiate ourselves in this large supplement industry that we have today. Well, Rich, again, uh, you know, we're excited here because, as, as always, you know, I look for those smaller companies, and, and as I said basically in my introduction, is you guys are a full disclosure company, which is very big in my mind, or I should say very big in my heart. You know, I, I would hope that someday down the road that the FDA comes knocking and makes it, you know, I guess a mandate that all companies have full disclosure labels, but that's another area we can talk for another company or another day, that is. Um, but give me a little demographics on the company itself. How long have you guys been in business? So Apollo Nutrition, for those who are in the tri-state area of, of the United States, it actually was founded and uh, originated at Apollo Gym out of Edison, New Jersey. Um, that it's uh, Apollo Gym opened up in 1975. Many of the top IFBB pros in the area trained there. Rich Gaspari got his start at Apollo Gym. Uh, Guy Cisnino now trains there quite frequently. Dorian Yates trained there for a very long time. Uh, so a lot of big name IFBB pros have come through that gym, um, and it just kind of happened organically. Back in 2015, the owner of Apollon Gym, uh, Robert Samborski, and his wife uh, Marina, uh, they kind of just sat down and they had had this hardcore gym with very intense uh, bodybuilders, powerlifters, strongmen at their gym, and they were like, "Well, you know, maybe we could create a supplement line that would that would increase revenues for the gym, and we'll just sell it out of the gym." Well, the Apollo Nutrition was born at that day, and it grew through word of mouth, and they really put out products for athletes, by athletes, and they really stood behind the idea of really giving clinically dosed um, products, because his wife, Marina, is a pharmacist, and he does a lot of research, and the three core values of Apollo Nutrition are passion, integrity, and transparency, so when you talk about full disclosure, that's something we're committed to in every single one of the products we have. When we talk about uh, a pre-workout, when we talk about a branch chain amino acids later in the show, and we talk about ingredients, you, your fans, anybody listening, you can go on our website and you can see what the label is, how every ingredient dose, what ingredients are in there. And there's a reason for that. We want to claim that we have great products and we don't want to hide behind a proprietary blend and just try and convince people to take our word for it. We want people to be able to read and educate themselves and see what's going on in our pr products, and that's what we're committed to for the long run. You'll never see a proprietary blend on any of our products, not our protein, not a pre-workout ever in, in our history. And Rich, and speaking with you offline, you're, you're new to the company yourself, correct? You just joined a month or two ago? Yeah, so um, I'm... Uh, Rich Lucci, I train with Guy Sister Nino. He's one of my best friends. He's trained. Guy has trained at Apollo Gym since 2007. Um, he took a little brief hiatus from there, and uh, about a year or two ago, we started going back there. I've been training with Guy for three years now, and we started training at, at, at the gym. And the supplement line was growing steadily, you know, through the gym. You know, we would just talk to Rob, the owner, um, when he would pop in and be at the gym about the supplement line, and uh, just developed a relationship with Rob through Guy. And uh, in talks with him and, you know, just having casual conversations. Um, he knows that I'm in business. My, my full-time job is in uh, pharmaceutical sales. So he knows um, I'm an educated person. I'm going back for my MBA. So, you know, when I would talk business with him, he liked a lot of my ideas. And he basically approached me saying, hey, do you have the time or availability to uh, really dedicate and, and help me, you know, grow this brand? He's like, I really believe in the products. I believe in the company. But, you know, I don't really have anyone on my team that really has uh, a big marketing or sales background. And he knew my undergrad, I did marketing, and I've been in sales for five years in the mortgage and farm industry. Um, so he brought me on, and uh, I've been with the company about two months, a little over two months. So um, I run the social media now, I negotiate athlete contracts, I run our brand ambassadors. Um, so I'm kind of just 
getting my feet wet, obviously, I had to learn about all the products, learn about the organization. Um, but now that I've kind of got my feet wet with all that, we're really starting to come out with um, a supplement tips uh, marketing campaign on our Instagram, and it will be uh, eventually posted on our website, which kind of just digs into our ingredients on a broader level. I'm really trying not to make it too scientific because then people kind of get lost in the weeds. But at sure. the same time, I don't want it to be bro science, you know, because then everybody kind of just discredits you and thinks that, you know, you don't really know the science. So it's really hard to find that balance and, and really uh, have people respect what you're saying and understand what you're saying when it comes to supplements, because some of these concepts get a little bit complicated and people just kind of tune out. So that's one thing that uh, the viewers, I, I hope definitely check out is our supplement tips. We got three of them up on our Instagram right now and we got plenty more coming because we have a lot of great ingredients uh, that really help us di differentiate from the competition because we are solely about performance, not profits. All of our ingredients are top quality ingredients that are expensive and we have them all at efficacious dosing for you guys. So hopefully you have the availability to try them out and, and see what we are uh, discussing throughout the rest of the show. And Rich, I always like to stalk, I mean, do some research on my guests, excuse me. Um, you're, you're a pretty big dude. Did you play ball or do you compete yourself? Yeah, so I played uh, football for 11 years. I played, people are familiar with Wagner College. It's one of the smallest D1 schools, but it's in New York City. So like I said, I studied marketing. So I went there, New York City, business degree. Um, thought it was a good idea to, to be there as, as far as location and get a good job out of college, which I did. So it all worked out. Um, and like I said, I, I trained with guys just, you know, so I competed in powerlifting for a little bit. It was just a, a natural transition out of uh, football and all the strength training. So I did well in powerlifting, but you know, I just obviously, if you look at 90% of powerlifters, they're probably not too happy with their physique. And, you know, I was getting that really round beer belly, and I was sure. like, this is not a good look. And uh, so no offense to, to the powerlifters out there, but they own it and they accept it. That's, that's where the strength comes from. That's so I can support big, heavy squats and deadlifts, that, that big belly. And I, I just didn't want to have that anymore. So I, I got hooked up with Guy. He needed a training partner. That was back in uh, uh, June, uh, right after the New York Pro uh, 2014. We started training together. And uh, it took me about two years to kind of shift and change my powerlifting body into bodybuilding. But, yeah, I competed in bodybuilding uh, in 2016. I won the Long Island Classic overall MPC uh, bodybuilding um, in my first show. Wow, what one weight? Uh, I, I competed. I was on stage at 197. So in 14 months, I basically did a 22-week like mock prep. And yeah. I took 12 weeks off and dieted for another 24. So I went from 273 down to 197 in 14 months and uh, competed at light heavyweight, won the overall. Um, and Guy was kind of busting my chops because he's telling me, uh, you know, all, all the years I competed in the NPC, I never won an overall. And, and you do your first show and you win an overall. So... Um, I, I was definitely very proud of that moment. You know, a lot of time and effort went into that. A lot of sacrifice, obviously, when anytime you're competing. Um, and I was going to continue with it this year, but in talks with Rob, I kind of had a feeling that a pollen was going to approach me with with the position and working a full time job and then doing a pollen and doing my MBA. I mean, that's enough and all by itself. Then having to cook and diet and cardio and, and lifts, there's just no way to get all that in. Sure. So. From my perspective, it was just a better investment. You know, my mom always told me, you know, you're going to get farther with your brain than your body. So, you know, now I'm negotiating, you know, sponsorship contracts with people rather than trying to chase one myself, you know, and I'm, I'm probably going to do a, a lot better financially because of it. So I made that decision. No offense to any of the competitors out there, but, you know, you always have to be in mind with what you're doing as a, a competitor that it is truly a hobby at the end of the day. And it, it does take a lot of time, effort and money out of you that you always got to stay grounded and make sure that, you know, you, you're you're making the right decisions for your future, you know, long term financially. So that's why I kind of pulled back from the uh, stage a little bit. But, you know, I still train with guys. So, so still a, a little bit bigger than than your average Joe, but definitely uh, not dieting down to get in stage shape anymore. Rich, before we get into the brand, I don't want to hijack this too much, but which, which was harder for you personally, going from the training aspect or or the food intake? Because I'm sure you're probably not eating clean as a power lifter, or maybe you, maybe you were, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely wasn't the cleanest eater as a power lifter. I mean, I was just calories, calories, yep. calories to get my strength up because um, I competed in power lifting naturally, so that's a whole different ballgame than somebody who's enhanced. Um, but all, all the people I was training with were, so I kind of used 
uh, food to recover versus um, PEDs. So um, we won't go down that road, obviously, but that's just the choice I made to do it naturally. And uh, it, was, it was really, you know, I used a lot of food to do it, and that's why I wasn't liking how I looked. You know, there's plenty of bodybuilders that eat, the, um, power lifters rather, that eat the right way and still look good and can power lift. I, I just wasn't one of them. So the biggest thing for me was getting into the swing of fasted cardio and dieting, you know, weighing your food out, yep. um, eating six times a day. I mean, when you're, when you're power lifting, you're eating a lot of food, but you're eating a lot of food at once. You know, I would eat maybe three, four very large meals a day versus pulling back your calories, limiting your carbs. And if you truly want me to be honest, the hardest thing about competing was the lack of sleep. Really, your body, okay. when you're that lean, um, anybody doing their first show, second show, that's the thing I was not prepared for. I could invest. I like cooking, so I could invest the time with cooking. I love working out. Cardio. I got to the point where I was doing enough where it was just like it was annoying, but it wasn't terrible. Yep. But the lack of sleep absolutely kills you. I would go to bed at like ten thirty, and I'd wake up at four thirty, wired. Just I never had been that lean in my life. Yep. So having my metabolism being that up to, to be, you know, starting probably about six weeks out from my show, it was just an absolute mind terror to, to, to have that lack of sleep when you're, you're putting your – I was doing two hours of cardio a day and lifting with Guy. I mean, anybody who knows Guy Cicernino knows he's, you know, basically second only branch with how intense he trains. Yep. So we'd have the, you know, one to two hour training sessions – you know, Charles Glass workouts where we're super set and drop set and everything, you know, so theoretically working out three to four hours a day in the kitchen, one to two hours a day, plus working a full-time job. Um, you know, all, all I wanted to do was sleep and I just physically couldn't do it. And, uh, you know, a lot of times people take things to help them sleep and I just didn't want to do that. Um, but that was honestly the hardest part was, was just being unprepared for, for the lack of sleep I would get. I mean, you're getting up to pee. You know, like, oh, yeah. not, not to get disgusting. But you're, you're peeing literally every hour on the hour, too. So, I mean, even the sleep you are getting, you, you're, you're just not – I mean, it's, it's not good sleep because every time you go into REM sleep, it takes about 45 minutes, and then you're up to go to the bathroom again. Yep. So it, it, was just, it was just – that was the most challenging part. So if I can give anyone some tips or advice, just try and be mentally prepared for that if you're, you're getting ready for your first show. Um, the, the lack of sleep is definitely the biggest bear, uh, at least was in my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I competed years ago, and that's the one thing I kind of forgot about. But, yes, now that you bring that up, I do remember. Yeah, because no carbs at night, and it's just strict protein, and that's all it is, just your kidneys working on high function. But anyway, um, so so getting back to the product line, you guys have got a very robust kind of full catalog. I don't know you know, maybe which product or products you'd like to, to tell the audience about. Yeah, so, so we definitely had uh, two or three products we, we definitely wanted to dive into. Um, we have uh, – a great line across the board. We're very proud of every product we put out, but um, we'll go after our pre-workout first. It's, the product's name is Hooligan. Uh, we have a couple flavors, orange mango and strawberry margarita. Both are flavored very, very well. Um, and the big difference about our pre-workout is one serving size is a true serving size. So we got six grams of citrulline malate, which for your educated listeners out there, everybody should know that citrulline malate is better than L-citrulline and both citrulline malate and L-citrulline are way better than arginine because of absorption ratios. The whole point of, of those two, pr of arginine and citrulline malate, is to increase nitric oxide levels, but arginine has very, very poor absorption, especially if you eat before you train and drink your pre-workout. You're pretty much getting virtually no arginine in your system, which translates into very, very little um, increase to nitrogen oxide levels. So we use citrulline malate, and we use a two-to-one ratio, which um, hopefully your listeners, that's, that's another buzzword. You want two-to-one ratio of citrulline to malate um, anytime you have a pre-workout. So essentially our blend is four grams of uh, L-citrulline and then uh, two grams of, of the malic acid. Um, then you kind of dive into uh, further in the label, you see that our beta-alanine is uh, the branded Carnosin, like I said, we, we try and bring in the greatest ingredients possible. Um, and just going down the list, we use creatine HCL. Um, again, for your advanced you know, listeners out there, everybody knows that creatine monohydrate works the best and is cheap. Uh, but because of the water molecule that's added to creatine monohydrate, that does create some uh, 
stomach problems for most people, bloating, cramping. Um, that's why everyone has to drink more water when they're on creatine yep. monohydrate to kind of combat those adverse reactions that they have um, that are extremely limited when you use creatine HCL. However, creatine HCL is more expensive. And as far as efficacy, you know, what, what strength you're getting in the recovery, it's very, very comparable to creatine monohydrate because it's essentially the same compound without the water molecule. So you're basically paying more money just to limit the adverse reactions. But that was truly, honestly, when I first started using um, a pollen's hooligan, that I noticed I could drink it on the way to the gym, which is how I typically I like to sip it so on, slow on the way to the gym. I had no issues from a stomach standpoint. Nice. Probably because of the arginine. People have issues digesting that because I would always eat a meal before I train. You know, that's one principle that bodybuilding always gave me that you got to get your meals in before you train. So I would always eat a meal and then go on the road. And, you know, obviously I only have five to 10 minutes of digestion before I start drinking my pre workout. So if your pre workout has arginine and creatine monohydrate, that could cause stomach issues. And then guess what? By the time you get to the gym 20, 25 minutes later, now your stomach's bloated, it's cramping, and, and you just don't feel comfortable for your workout. Exactly. Nobody really wants that. And that's that's truly, honestly, something I can say I've never gotten with Hooligan as I've been taking it and something I really enjoy because I wouldn't take it a pre-workout most of the time on, on leg days. You know, me and Guy, we separate legs up, so we have a quad day and a hamstring day, and I would never take a pre-workout on those days just because I didn't want the pressure on my belt um, while I was lifting, and I don't have those issues with Hooligan. So that's, that's something I really enjoy and something we have in our pre-workout that – you know, I'm not the, the expert on every single supplement known to man, but I'm pretty sure most supplements don't have L-leucine in it, which most people know is, is the primary branch chain amino acid that's in everybody's BCAs that has all the special effects for, for bodybuilding and working out. So we actually have two grams of L-leucine in our pre-workout. Um, so when you drink our pre-workout plus our BCAs, everything we have is, is kind of working energetically. Um, and, and why our labels are truly packed with ingredients, not fillers. Um, one thing that will probably jump out to people um, when they pick up our label or look online is that our pre-workout has 600 milligrams of caffeine in it. So for some people, that makes them like take a step back, and they're like, wow, that, that's a lot. Well, if you pick up the average proprietary blend pre-workout that's out there, some of them might not even list how much caffeine is in it, but most of them, it's about 150 to 300 milligrams of caffeine per scoop, per serving. Well, how many memes out there are, oh, I took three scoops and, you know, oh, I, I, I had to take two or three, and it happens all the time of all these proprietary blend pre-workouts because they just simply don't have the level of ingredients that we have in our true one-scoop serving size. And uh, we're very proud of that. And people will notice if they add up all the caffeine in a true serving size of some of these other products, it's very close to 600 or probably even more than 600 milligrams of caffeine. Um, but you have to be very, very mindful of the fact that there is a portion of the population uh, that is very stimulant sensitive. So um, I know this is a, a little bit later down in the show, but one of our new, newer products that's going to be coming to market hopefully in the next six to eight weeks, it's in manufacturing right now, is a non stim pre-workout that's exactly the same formulation as Hooligan, just with no caffeine. Why are we doing that? Because Hooligan is a pump formula and a stim formula. A lot of people kind of niche their pre-workout as one or the other, while ours is very balanced. All of our products, we try and balance them the best we can. And by taking out that stimulant, it allows the, the word, you know, like I'm in form, as I said, uh, we use titrate. So you can dose it up or you can dose it down based upon how you feel that day or the workout. So you get one um, of our non-stim pre-workout and you get one of Hooligan and you can kind of go back and forth based upon how much stimulant you need on that given day. And that's the goal. And we're, we're flavoring it so that you can kind of mix them together and it's not going to taste disgusting. Um, so that's one of the things that we do have in the works right now. Um, and one of my first decisions, um, when I came onto a pollen was, well, I, I see this 600 milligrams. That's going to take, make some people take a step back because some people with their work schedule, what have you, they have to lift later in the night and they're not yep. going to want all that caffeine. 
Um, so we truly are trying to think of everything. You know, when you're a smaller company, we're not a, a multi-million dollar national brand company. You can't have every product under the sun, but you try and get as well-balanced products as you can so you truly can hit as many people and as many um, people as there are in the population so that you have something for everybody as best you can. So that's one of the products we're going to be coming out with for sure. So obviously, Rich, when when, uh, when we're looking at this, this is for more of the, not a weekend warrior kind of average show. This is more of the, the true, I'm going to use the word hardcore type person that, that knows their supplements. Yeah, our our demographic is, it's not going to be the the beginner lifters, the first time supplement buyers, because just in, in, unless they're a very science based person, which let's be honest, most most young athletes they they're not not really paying attention too much in science class, you know you're you're going to not know the ingredients, you're not going to know the difference, and you probably don't really have uh, the finances to buy a whole spectrum of supplements. I know if I think back, you know, 10 years ago when I, I was, you know, really getting my feet wet with supplements, you know, I basically had money for a protein and a pre-workout. Yep. I didn't know what branch chain aminos were. I didn't have a fat burner. I didn't buy a separate jug of glutamine. I didn't buy a creatine. Like you just don't have that wealth of knowledge. You're spending so much time trying to just learn how to bench press the right way, let alone and eat right to, to try and come back and find out what supplements to use you kind of just listen to whatever your buddy or your older brother or somebody you respect in the gym. Oh, I use this, try this, this one's great. But everybody's going to metabolize everything differently. I mean, I probably tried 10 different pre-workouts in a year when, when I was younger, just because everybody said, Oh, this one's so strong. This is great. And then you buy a whole jug, you try and you're like, Oh, that's worse than the one I just tried. The flavor's bad. You know, so those things kind of happen all the time for us. We truly need that educated consumer that's going to be able to pick up a bottle of our hooligan, pick up a bottle of Enigma, turn the label around, read it, and know the difference between creatine HDL and monohydrate. Understand, oh, wow, citrine malate? What's, oh, wh- why is that in there? Oh, because it's, it's the, the best ingredient to increase nitric oxide levels. So there is a level of education you need to have when you're trying to buy a premium supplement because – everything comes down to dollars and cents in this economy. And this is obviously something people are going to use their discretionary income on. So if they don't understand why they're paying more for something, they're quite simply not going to do it. So that's my job and my responsibility as a marketer is to educate. And I appreciate you giving me this platform to kind of dive into why us, why our products and really educate people. And that's what I'm trying to do with our Instagram account now uh, which is Apollo Nutrition uh, at Instagram, and and really just dive into not the full nitty gritty like I said, but give people an education so we're not just coming out and being like, oh, we're the best, we're the strongest, and just beating a, a dead horse that every company's doing. And we truly say, hey, look at us for this reason, look at us for that reason, and, and really look at our labels. And, and truly make the best decision for yourself and invest the time. I mean, you're putting a lot of money out for supplements. You're putting them in your body. You want to make sure they're going to work. And I can truly say with pride, every one of our products works because they're engineered and formulated with great ingredients that are at clinically um, proven doses. And that's not just something I'm blowing smoke. Anybody can pick up our labels. Anybody can go on our website and check it out, read it for yourself. I encourage everyone to do so. Anytime you're, you're spending a lot of money, I mean, the average person, if you're getting a full line of supplements, you're probably paying a couple hundred dollars a month. You want to make sure you're getting the best thing you possibly can at the end of the day. You know, and, and I appreciate that, Rich, because that, that's the other thing, too, that I, that I forgot to mention earlier is obviously the transparency was a big goal, which, which is why I wanted to talk to you guys. But the other thing, too, and we'll talk more products in a second here, is, and this is not to diminish other companies out there, but you guys don't have the typical flavor profile of Fruit Punch and Blue Raz. You've got more exciting, more unique flavors, which was another draw to, my com- draw to your company. We, we definitely appreciate that, and when our owner, Rob, hears this, he's probably going to have a big grin on his face. Because we will never, ever put out Fruit Punch in any of our flavor combinations. It, it, honestly, everybody does it. Most of the time, it tastes like medicine. It, it's just something we're never going to do. It's too generic. It's too easy. Um, 
we're never going to come out with watermelon. He hates watermelon too, but fruit punch is not us. Um, and you're right. You have to, you have to give a person a reason to buy. There's so many options, so many opportunities for people, so many deals that people run on supplements all the time that you, you got to have something that, that why, why, Tom, why you guys. Um, and that's, that's how we, that's one way you can differentiate yourselves. We, we kind of have like alcoholic based names. Our pre-workout hooligan has strawberry margarita. Um, our non-stim is going to be a berry daiquiri. Um, so it's not your typical overly sweet BCAAs that I absolutely hate because when you're working out to me, the last thing I want is to think I'm like drinking like syrup or candy, yep. which is a lot of times what you get in BCAAs. Um, you don't get that. Our blue bomb is more like a blueberry. Like it's not overly sweet, but it's not undersweet. So I think it's just perfect. And then we have a totally outside the box coconut lime flavor that people, when they taste it, it's so refreshing. And I love drinking that in the morning with my fasted cardio. That's our chainsaw product. Yep. Um, call it a hybrid BCA because it actually has glutamine in it. Um, so I'll just give that a quick plug. Both of our branch chain amino acids, Enigma, which is our intra-workout and recovery formula, and Chainsaw, they both have electrolytes and five grams of glutamine. Everybody knows glutamine for recovery. Some people don't know that glutamine is also good for cardiovascular endurance. So because we want our BCAs used intra-workout, um, we put the, the five grams of glutamine in there. So you no longer have to buy a separate jug of glutamine anymore. It's all right in your BCAs that you're having every single day. So you're, you're getting bonus things. So that's a differentiating factor. The, the flavors are definitely a differentiating factor. So uh, we definitely appreciate the fact that, that you uh, you noticed that. It's you know it's, it's always to go off on a tangent here. It's, it's always difficult though for a new company. It's like, do you play it safe? You know, and go with the go, I guess we said go with the fruit punches and everything because I think statistically the the, the safe ones are the bigger sellers. Or do you just throw it again, throw it out on the line and hope that someone's going to buy, you know, a, a, a passion or, or peach mango or coconut lime? It's always a gamble, so it's not to diminish anybody. It's a gamble. Oh, for, oh, for sure. You know, it's everybody has to take calculated risks. You know, you can blend in with the crowd, or you can jump out of the crowd, and e either one's kind of a risk because, well, if everybody has fruit punch, well, some people, okay, well, that's what I'm used to. I'm, I'm going to go that and. You know, as, as Americans, we're, we're used to fruit punch flavoring, so you kind of know what you're getting. Yep. But then you also have people, I mean, honestly, when it comes down to BCAs, most people have a two-to-one-to-one -to -one ratio, or at least they should. So if they have the branch chain amino acids, they, they probably want a different flavor at some point. And that's what's cool about us is that we have Chainsaw and Enigma, so we have two flavors that are really designed for throughout the day and fasted cardio with Chainsaw. And then we have Enigma, which is an intra workout that will that is my next product that I wanted to dive into, that has passion fruit and pineapple, and so it kind of breaks it up. So you're not always drinking the same exact flavor all the time. So in the morning with your cardio, and while you're training, just getting the same flavor over and over again. No matter how much you like it, you're going to get sick of it at some point and have to buy something else. Yep. And if you only have that generic flavor you're going to buy a different company at whenever that something else comes into play. So he, there's, like I said before, you can't paint everybody with the brush. You can't make everybody happy all the time. We obviously want customers that are going to be brand loyal because of the quality of the products we come out, but you can't have 25 flavors. Exactly. You know, it's just not realistic. The you know, so you're, you're never going to make everybody happy, and you just got to be real about that. So, But it is. It's a calculated risk that, you know, you can go with the herd or you can kind of branch off. And you can't get offended if someone says, I don't really like that flavor. That doesn't mean the flavor was engineered poorly. It doesn't mean, oh, it tastes like chemicals. It's just not a flavor for them. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Thank you for trying. Have a great day. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's, exactly. that's how we approach it when we do our demos, when we go to shows and supplement stores. You just can't expect 100% success rate, especially when you come out with a coconut lime flavor that's a little bit more exotic that you know, maybe people hate coconut. You never know. Yep. You, you, can't, you can't help that. But as long as they're like, Oh, I, I don't like the flavor. If somebody says to you, oh, that it doesn't taste right, that's worse to me than um, saying that I don't like the flavor. If you don't like the flavor, no problem. Uh, thank you for the feedback. But if somebody's telling you consistently it doesn't taste right, that means your, your manufacturer didn't 
uh, manufacture the product correctly because it tastes like a chemical. There's an aftertaste. I can guarantee people aren't going to get any of that with our products. Good, good. And any other products you wanted to address so we can continue moving on? Yeah, I, I definitely wanted to highlight our Enigma. Okay. Because that is one, one product that we really differentiate ourselves with. So um, I'll be blatantly honest with you. When I signed on with Apollon, I'm like, guys, why the heck do we have two BCAs? I, I don't get it. Can somebody explain it to me? And they're like, well, well, well hold on. you got to read the label. I'm like, okay, I'm reading the label. What's going on? Um, in Enigma, we have a three-to-one-to-one ratio versus the two-to-one-to-one ratio we have in our chainsaw. But the big difference here, we still have the, the five-gram glutamine, but in Enigma, we have two grams of creatine HCL, which we talked about a little bit earlier. It's better than the monohydrate. Yep. It's going to help you for strength during. It's also going to help you with recovery after. So that's why it's an intra or recovery formulation. Um, we have L-carnitine in it, two, two grams. We have taurine, and we have bioprene. So bioprene helps with absorption. So <clears throat> all these extra ingredients we have on top of the increased amount of the BCAs we have in there, I can truly say to all your listeners right now, when I, I start off, I just took chainsaw. I'm like, I'm used to just a BCA. I don't... I don't need this Enigma because they told me it was a recovery formula when I got on. I'm like, well, I'm not going to drink my post-workout shake and then after drinking a pre-workout, then drinking BCAs during workout, then a post-workout shake, and then a recovery shake. Like, it's too much water. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't understand it. I, how, how the hell am I going to sell this? I, I, don't, I don't get it. Um, so then they're like, well, why don't you try the Enigma you know, during your workout? You know, Look at the label. I'm like, all right, let me give it a try. And I, I truly, honestly, I'm such a fan of Enigma now during my workout because I truly feel shorter recovery times, which is insane to me yep. because I, I've been doing this bodybuilding style workout for, you know, o over two years now. And I'm used to that, you know, short rest times, high reps, endurance style training. And those extra ingredients that I wasn't getting before in just the standard BCAA, you are getting in the Enigma. Um, so it's a little bit more expensive, obviously, than your standard BCA, because it's not. It's, there's more in it, obviously. It makes it more expensive. So we doubled the amount of electrolytes we had uh, in it versus chainsaw, and it really, truly, if somebody takes a scoop of BCA for a workout one day and they try Enigma the next, I can virtually guarantee that they're going to feel a difference in how they feel during their training and the recovery times that they have because of those added ingredients. And it comes in passion fruit and pineapple, and those are very similar flavors right now. So as a marketing guy, I'm probably going to try and switch that up at some point because passion fruit has pineapple, mango, and peach in it. So I don't really see a need to have pineapple and passion fruit, but those are the flavors that are available now. Both of them taste very, very well. Um, got a lot of great feedback when we do our demos on them. So if you're a pineapple juice person, I guarantee you're going to like the pineapple. If you kind of like that tropical blend of fruit punch, well, this is kind of like a tropical uh, punch uh, that you can have in passion fruit. So um, those, those are the uh, the two main products that we definitely wanted to highlight um, on the show, the Hooligan, the Enigma, um, for sure. And, and, and again, to go back to – not to beat a dead horse, but to go back to flavor profile, pineapple is a very interesting flavor because I've tried a thermo by another company that's pineapple. A lot of times at first glance, like you said earlier, it's kind of like you look at it and say, pineapple, what the heck? But pineapple to me is one of those type of – like I could see it with, with your Enigma. Is it something that I would not slam? It's something that I would probably sip throughout the day on a hot day with a boatload of ice in it just kind of almost to freshen up my water but get a good ingredient, good amount of BCAAs but just something different in my flavor, pal flavor palette. Yeah, I mean honestly pineapple is not a very common uh, flavor for supplements in the U.S., in like Australia and abroad, uh, they love pineapple. So it's, it's really what the demographic is. So it's, it's a little bit more unique for us in the U.S. market, but it truly does taste very similar to like a pineapple juice. Obviously, there's no pulp in it, but it's, it's not crazy sweet, but it tastes exactly like pineapple. Yep. Um, so it's, it's not uh, this artificially kind of watered down hint of pineapple but it's really just like water no there's a full flavor of pineapple when you're drinking it so we have plenty of people one of our sponsored athletes is Shanique Grant 
Uh, she won the New York Pro in Women's League. She drinks Enigma uh, pineapple all day long. She loves it. You know, it's got the three to one to one BCA ratio. It's got the electrolyte. So you can literally take either Chainsaw Enigma any time of day you want. I just position Enigma absolutely over Chainsaw for your workout because of those extra ingredients you have. But it is truly a recovery formula because you got the creatine in there, you got the glutamine, and you got the BCAs. Um, so your, your muscles are going to be very happy with you. I'm, I'm teetering. I got to see the legality of it, but we're probably going to try and position our products versus Gatorade because of the electrolytes we have. I don't know if, if that's smart or bad because yeah. they could crush us. Um, but truly, I mean, at the end of the day for athletes, the BCAs plus electrolytes were the product that Gatorade should be, but it's a proprietary blend. We don't even know what electrolytes and the levels that are, are in Gatorade. Um, but we have five out of the top seven um, main electrolytes in our Enigma. So it's absolutely a great drink for athletes, for anybody who's working out even throughout the day, just to, just to simply recover, just like you're saying, just throw, throw a scoop in with a bunch of ice, Put in your gallon jug, carry it throughout the day. Excuse me, it's it, it really is very very versatile because of, of the unique formulation that it is. Yep. So aside from and you mentioned earlier, I guess future future products, you have a, a non caffeinated pre workout coming out. What else can people look forward to? Another thing that's on the horizon. I don't want to dive too much into our sure. protein, but our protein is a fifty fifty blend. So it's fifty percent isolate, fifty percent uh, my cellar uh, casein. So it's a fast digesting protein and a slow digesting protein. A little bit of a wrinkle in the standard uh, of the protein market. Usually you get one or the other and people take them at different times. But science proves that having fast and slow digesting protein is a good thing because protein synthesis is a theoretical threshold. Everybody throws out 20 grams, 30 grams, how much you can absorb at one time. Well, no one truly knows. In your body weight, whether you're a girl, you're a guy, there are so many factors, your metabolism, that could play into your protein absorption. Well, if you have a fast-absorbing protein, you get you know, one scoop, you get 12.5 grams of fast-absorbing, you get 12.5 of slow uh, digesting, then you're going to maximize what you're doing with your protein consumption. However, there are bodybuilders or uh, powerlifters or Anybody who's really serious about lifting knows that whey protein isolate is the best that you possibly can get for post-workout sure. specifically. Um, so we are going to formulate at some point next year a, a 100% blend of whey isolate. Um, I don't know what the flavors we're going to pick out with, but we kind of got to adjust. Right now we have five different flavors of our 50-50 Formula X, which is the the – isolate casein blend so we might pull a couple of flavors of the formula x just because anybody knows protein i mean it's very very expensive to manufacture protein so we got five flavors of 50 50 and then we come out with say two or three of, of the isolate i mean you're talking about tens of thousands of dollars that would be sitting around in inventory yep. um but for for us uh the non-stem pre-workout should be out sometime in september very excited for that and then the the hundred percent isolate for those that uh, don't know about proteins. I mean, a lot of times you see these blends in the supplement market these days. Well, all a whey blend is is a proprietary blend. So you don't know how much concentrates in there. You don't know how much isolate is in there. Whey protein isolate has to be at least ninety percent protein. Whey concentrate can be thirty percent protein up to ninety percent protein. So. If somebody blends in, say, 90% concentrate and only 10% isolate, you can have a substantially reduced amount of protein than you think you're getting in, in your product, regardless of what the label says. Everybody who's educated knows that companies get hit left and right with label claims because of uh, amino spiking. That is something we will never get hit with, I guarantee you. Um, so that's why we're going to come out with 100% whey isolate because that's truly the best for post-workout. But our 50-50 blend is great for in the morning, pre-workout, at night. I mix it in my oatmeal, pre-workout, and in my morning with my eggs. So it truly is, is a great protein. And because it has the caffeine, 
it gives it a little bit more of a creamy texture, yep. um, which sometimes when you have isolate, you're pretty much drinking flavored water. I mean, unless you, you're mixing it with like, you know, juice or, or almond milk, which you probably shouldn't be doing if, if you're truly an athlete. You know, most of the time people just drink it with water. I mean, there's, there's kind of nothing. For, for a good reason, it's engineered to be fast absorbed, so you don't really want it to be super creamy or anything, but that's what people who try our flavors out, um, they truly like the taste of our protein, especially you throw in the highly branched chain psychodextrin, which is our cluster bond product, um, which we, we won't dive into that, but you know, you're know you basically getting fast absorbing carbs with the protein, um, so that's the ultimate uh, post-workout uh, supplement that you could have um, with the, the fast absorbing protein and whey protein isolate and then highly branched chain psychodextrin with our cluster bomb. So two scoops, two scoops for a guy, one scoop, one scoop for the girl. Be very happy with, with your results. Gotcha. And, and Rich, what do you think Rob's three to five year plan is at the company? I mean, do you, do you think he eventually wants to sell out or does he want to just keep growing small and organically? Well, right now the plan is to grow organically, but there is no uh, intention to selling out. Um, the way that the supplement industry works is when you're a small fish like this and you kind of start making noise, most of the time the big fish want to gobble you up and shut you up so they can keep going with the proprietary blends. But like I said, our goal is to kind of change the long-term outlook of what supplement companies are able to do. We'll never put a, a proprietary blend on a, a pollen nutrition product. Um, we also have zero intentions of selling the company. Um, that's why they brought me on to grow it. They didn't bring me on to grow it just so they can flip it in a, in a couple of years. You know, they already have opportunities for buyers and investors, and that's not something they're interested in. We're looking to grow into a nationally recognized brand that grows slowly and organically where we don't have to get into every supplement store in the country right away, and then we have to worry about pricing them all out and stripping ingredients from our products to remain profitable so that we can hire employees to sustain the size of the company we are. Yep. That's not that's not in the plan. So the three to five year plan, um, we're probably going to bring on a, a big name uh, sponsored athlete um, that we're in negotiations with at, at this point um, to try and really take us to that next level and, and be a big investment. Nice. Um, can't disclose nice. who at this point, but that should be finalized in the next month or two. Um, so that's really exciting uh, for us for long term uh, growth. But, yeah, it truly is. You know, Rob, me, everybody who's involved with the company understands that when you grow slow, that's sustainable. It's the people that try and grow fast, too fast, get into 20 stores this month, 30 stores. That, like, you know, you, you never want to turn into a company that has to go bankrupt a couple of years after being, you know, one of the hot up-and-coming brands just because you overextended yourself. You know, anytime you're growing, you have to grow inventory. Growing inventory, you know, needs finances. So you're constantly just reinvesting all the money you're making as you're growing just so you can support the inventory levels that you have. And then obviously you got to support marketing and things of that nature and advertising. Sure. Um, so we're hopeful that, um, you know, we obviously can, you know, over the next couple of years really um, go into that effort of going to stores. Their first couple of years uh, was more of a direct sales model. Uh, they brought me in to really help facilitate the transition into getting into supplement stores which obviously is going to grow the company um, because you're into a lot more sales out of a supplement store than you will in direct marketing, um, direct to consumer. Um, so over the next one to two years, you'll start seeing more and more Apollo Nutrition on shelves. And we're hopefully, you know, three to five years, you know, that we're, we're, you know, a five to $10 million company. And, you know, we have money for advertising and people, we can get our products into more people's hands because we truly believe if you try our products, a premium supplement like Apollo Nutrition's, that, that you'll never go back to using anything less um, because you truly feel the difference of what a true full serving size of high quality ingredients is going to do for you. Nice. And Rich, here, here's a section of the show that I, that I just recently started. And I, I kind of mentioned offline that I don't pull any punches, but here's a new section that I just started. And it's basically we learned all about the company, learned about the founder, but it's five random questions about you, the person I'm talking with. So I'm just going to spit, okay. spitfire five random questions and whatever first comes to your mind, just quick and easy. Again, it's not going to set you up or anything, but just something I like to do to give the listeners more to learn more about you, the person. Absolutely. Okay, cool. so what's the last movie you've seen? Last movie I've seen? 
it's embarrassing. I, the last movie I saw, I watched uh, Xander Cage, the the new Triple X. It was absolutely horrible. I watched it the other night. I hated it. But uh, the same night, I watched John Wick Two, and John Wick Two was absolutely amazing. Did you so like it? Let's go with John Wick Two is technically my the second to last movie I've seen. Um, but I watched them both in the same night. John Wick Two is an awesome movie. Any of your listeners that haven't seen John Wick One or Two, Keanu Reeves. He does a great job. It's a fantastic movie. Anybody who likes action, he's a true badass uh, uh, main character. No, I have to agree for a minute here, though, but did you like one or two better? Oh, I mean, honestly, probably two. Really? One, one to me, um, the, the kid from uh, Game of Thrones, he was just too much of a little, you know, B-I-T-C-H for me. Okay. I don't, I don't you know can say it. No, you can say it. It's fine. Oh, he was just such a bitch. It really, it almost ruined the movie for me, how much of a little girl he was. Um, so the second one, he was just truly just a badass. And honestly, when I watched the first one, I had zero expectations. Nobody was really talking about it. Yeah. I red boxed it. And uh, I saw it. I'm like, wow, this was a badass friggin' movie. Um, so, like, I kind of had high expectations, and they exceeded my expectation of the second one, which everybody was a movie buff, you know, the sequel is always the hardest because you already set expectations yep. with the first one. So for me, um, outside the intro, the intro didn't really make all that much sense to me. If, if you saw the second I, one, I did where, recently where he see kind it. Of just, he, he, he kind of like makes peace with the Russians and then they like transition right into the Italian mob. Yep. Um, so that to me was like a little whimsical, but, uh, overall I think the, uh, the concept, just because they integrated more and they gave you more of like the the world that he lives in in the second one, with like the marker and the the network of people in Italy that that he was able to get things from. So you kind of understood more like about the backstory rather than just some badass who's running around just taking everyone out because they stole his car and killed his puppy. Oh, you just ruined so. it! I was gonna keep that part off. You just spoiled it if people haven't seen it. But anyway. Well, that, 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 the first one, he, everybody's got to know. They, they put that in the trailer. Uh, well, can't be a spoiler alert. <laughs> no, but I, I, have to, I have to agree. I actually watched two last week, and I watched the first one a couple of weeks ago, just on, on, on light buzz. But yes, if, if you're an action person and like Keanu Reeves, well, regardless if you like Keanu Reeves or not, but definitely two good movies to see. Um, Rich, what's the, what's the first supplement you ever used? And I'll explode. By BSN. BSN. Okay. The original. Sorry to hear that. It was, it was marketed by, by Triple H. And uh, I saw the commercial, my first pre-workout I ever took. And uh, this was back when, when NO Explode was really NO Explode. Yeah. You know, and you freaking, it, it ruined your stomach. You had to go to the bathroom immediately after taking it. But, uh, I mean, the, the energy and focus, I mean, was unparalleled. It was probably one of the strongest agents I've ever taken in my life as far as focus is concerned. I mean, it turned, turned you into like an animal. And yep. then uh, everybody knows the BSN story that, you know, the you know, pe people. Want, I honestly, I wouldn't even take it for free. Guy, everybody knows. Guy knows he was sponsored by BSN. He gave me free NO Explode, and I just give it to my other friends. I wouldn't even take it for free. <laughs> you know, the the 2.0, 2.5 version, whatever the hell it was. I wouldn't even take it for free. I mean, it's just so bad oh, um, on every level. The flavor's horrible. It's fillers. It's, it's not efficacious. It's just horrible. But yeah, that was truly the first supplement I ever had, and that was Fruit Punch. You know, they had Fruit Punch and they had some lemon lemon ice flavor. Yep. And if you took it, it would always explode your, your shaker bottle up. And if you were rushing around and you forgot, you'd have freaking endo explode all over your counter and your mom would yell at you. Or my mom would at least. Oh, God. Get those chemicals off my counter. <laughs> that would happen. That would happen quite frequently. What's, a, um, what's, your, favorite, yeah. what's your favorite sports team? Uh, Philadelphia Eagles. I'm from uh, PA originally. Got season tickets to Philadelphia Eagles. So as a football player, they're pretty much my, my only team I truly care about is the Philadelphia Eagles. Wow, sorry sorry to hear that, but I'm a Miami Dolphins fan, so I kind of have no claim to football either. Uh, it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, especially I went to school in New York City. I live in Jersey now. I, I get my stones busted all, all the damn time about how uh, little uh, championships we have. We have two championships with no Super Bowls, and that's all people care about these days. And I, when, I, when I was – in college, in, in school, in Wagner College, they, they won two Super Bowls, the, 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 the Giants. And I uh, went to school. People know that the, the Giants, I, I played football with Charles Beattie, who's William Beattie, um, their left tackle. And I actually played high school football against uh, Justin Pugh, their left tackle. So I had ties to the, ties to the team. The team's winning. The team's doing well. And I'm, I'm the only Philly fan for, you know, 50 miles. And that kind of stunk. But 
you, you got bleed green. When you're when you're a, a Philly fan, you can't really be a fan of any other team. Speak, speaking of, speaking of uh, Giants, to go off on a tangent here, that, that's my biggest thing. Being a New Yorker, they've been both Jets and Giants have been in Jersey for thirty plus years. Why the hell did I still call them New York? <laughs> It's comical, I know. I, I got a, uh, one of the guys I played football with is a linebacker for the Jets right now, and uh, he's he's around Jersey all the time. I'm like, I don't get it. He's Rutherford. Why, why can't why can't we just uh, give Jersey some uh, some shine for a little bit? You got two New York teams that are both in Jersey. Can, can we can we change one of these over? And it's just one one of those things that you, you just don't understand. It just is what it is. So, so question four: What's your least favorite body part to train? Least favorite body part to train? Um, hmm. Probably hamstrings, to be completely honest with you. Mostly because, for whatever reason, when I train them a lot of times, I cramp. When I, when I do seated uh, hamstring curls, I'll cramp occasionally and, and lying hamstring curls. And I honestly, probably because I just never did them. Yeah. Growing up as a football player and, and as a power lifter, I mean, everything you do for legs, you know, power cleans, squats, deadlifts, I mean, you're always obviously in, engaging the hamstring by itself, but when I transitioned to bodybuilding and I had to isolate them, it was just hell because I'd never done it before. It was, it was just, you don't need it. You It's an accessory lift that you don't need in, in the strength training I was doing, but I'll tell you what, it definitely helped my leg press, it helped my uh, squatting, getting more depth, so it's always that kind of love-hate relationship that you have, but everything else I love, I mean... I, I, and the, the only thing I feel awkward, I feel awkward training arms. You know, I feel like everybody looks at you, especially if you have decent sized arms already. Everyone's always, you know, giving you the glare of like, really, dude, come on, you already won. Just, just give it a rest. You don't need to train arms. Yep. So I, I don't really like getting the glares when I train arms because that's another body part I never trained when you're a football player. Never trained arms. I mean, you did a little bit of bicep curls when he, when the football workout was over, but that was about it. Everything was about bench squat deads and power explosion. So I never trained arms. So. And maybe the, the hamstrings and arms are just awkward because I, I never really had them, yep. you know, in in my uh, arsenal before. But obviously, bodybuilding, I needed to do them, and you know, you, you train everything. I mean, you train six days a week, so you know, hit hit arms, hit hamstrings, quads, everything. So, but overall, you know, everything's a mindset. You, when you walk into the gym, for me, training's training. You know, you're you're in there for a reason. You're in there for a purpose. You're there to better yourself. You're there to, you know, release some some tension, some stress. It's therapy. So. You got to you got to train everything to to have a symmetrical body. You know, you, know, you never want to be chicken little in the gym, have this big torso and no legs. You know how yep. how many people do that? You know, and that's not acceptable. So it's it's all about symmetry. You you always want to have balance. So you got you got to train everything, no matter what you don't like training. That's probably what you need to train the most because it's probably a lagging body part. So oh, yeah. find a way, get it done, take your pre workout, put turn the music up a little bit more, and and get amped up and get after it. In which last question, favorite bodybuilder? If I don't say Guy Cicinino, he's probably going to smack me across the mat. All right, who's your second favorite um, bodybuilder? <laughs> second favorite bodybuilder? It, it's got to be a dead tie, honestly, between uh, Jay Cutler and Ronnie Coleman. Because when I, um, you know, I'm not super old, I'm 27, um, but when I was growing up and, and just starting to lift at like 15, 16 years old, those were the guys who were at the top. And you only really had YouTube videos. You didn't have Instagram. Yep. You didn't have Facebook Live and all that stuff. So, really just had um these videos and it was just jay talking about his mindset what it took to be a champion you know the things he sacrificed and dedicated and then obviously you just had ronnie i mean the i talk about this all the time ronnie incline benching those 200 pound dumbbells for reps i mean when you're a 15 16 year old kid i'm like that's my yeah. body weight each, each friggin' arm holy hell i mean i was just mesmerized um, by that one video alone. So those two guys were just such an inspiration. I mean, I never even thought about I always wanted to be a football player. I mean, I, would, I never did a bodybuilding workout in my life until I met Guy. Yep. Um, but you just look at these guys and the dedication, the sacrifice that they go through to get their bodies as big and as lean they are, and everybody wants to trash them because of the PEDs, and I get it. But until you do a show – you truly have no idea what it's like to be carb depleted and get in that gym two or three times a day to do your cardio and do your lift and and still like be an, a, a friendly person to people so you don't ruin every relationship you had before you decided to do a show. I mean, it's just a lot to balance and, and still be a, a good person and 
those guys just opening the doors for like truly the first time besides, you know, Arnold's obviously pumping iron was the first time anyone really got uh, an inside look into what, what the bodybuilding's like. Um, but those guys just opening those doors to just really give you that motivation and talk about their mindset. I mean, that's why a guy has the problem he does. He does that same thing of opening the door, telling people, you know, why do I do what I do? Why am I dedicated? You know, and people love it because – a lot of people don't have that just innate ability to be motivated and, and just to get after it. So people listen to that and it inspires and it motivates. So those two guys were truly, you know, it was such an honor the first time I met Jay. You know, I, I didn't even know what to say to the guy. I mean, what do you say to someone who impacted your life so so much that you'd never met in your life and it truly just helped mold who you are today? You know, lifting and, and bodybuilding is such a big part of my life. Yep. Um, just because it's helped everything. I mean, people do X, Y, and Z as far as, you know, trying to, you know, eliminate stress. For me, it was, it was always in the gym. You know, you break up your girlfriend, you go lift weights. You go, you got an A on your test, you go lift weights. You know, whether it, things are good or things are bad, you know, it's, the, the answer is always getting in a heavy lift. You know, that's just the way I always viewed it. And those guys just helped me get to that point of just like, you know, it ain't nothing but a peanut. Like good old Roddy <laughs> Oh, yeah. You, you just play those words over and over in your head before a set, and you're just like, "F this, man! I'm gonna go lift a house." And and those those two guys definitely did it for me. So I'm so appreciative that they put themselves out and were trailblazers um, for what we have today. And I truly tell people all the time that they don't understand how lucky they are to have Instagram and Insta stories where you get to see every single workout people are doing. I mean, me when I was young, growing up and lifting. I just tapped everyone on the shoulder, and I was like, what's that exercise? Yep. How do you do that? Nobody does that to me now. I mean, not to sound arrogant, but I'm in decent shape. I train with guy. Nobody's tapping me on the shoulder. Hey, hey can you help me out? I'd love to, but it's just people. if you go up proactively to someone, they look at you sideways like, dude, dude I got it. Don't worry about it because everybody's an expert now because they see the videos, and they don't really put two and two together that, you know, how lucky and fortunate they are to – to see what a bodybuilder, like a true full list of a bodybuilder every single day of the week, what they're doing to progress and change and shape their body. Yep. There's so much that people can learn and write down that I just, I just learned through trial and error through, through my days. And obviously guy, everybody, I mean, they just had magazines. You had the Arnold encyclopedia and it was just figure it the hell out. These days, everybody has it. So right at the end of the fingertips. So if you want to be, a bodybuilder, if you want to change this, or you want to learn a new exercise, you can do it. I mean, Charles Glass is always putting out variations of different exercises. I mean, the man's a genius. I mean, he'll put you on a hamstring machine and somehow you're training your lats. I mean, you don't even know how the guy does it, but he's a genius. I mean, I've trained with him a couple of times and Have you really? every single time it's like never lifted before. I mean, it's, it's absolutely insane. After the first exercise, you're, you're dead. It, it, you can't even put it into words. What, this, this guy, some people just get it. You know, some people are artists; they just get it. No matter how much I paint, I'd never be able to paint. Yep. No matter how how much I, I do bodybuilding and whatnot, I'll never be able to get the body mechanics like Charles Glass does. He, he just gets it, and you just learn. You soak these things in, and everything is everything is an opportunity. So, those two guys were huge for me. Um, hopefully, I can be that that person. I know people give him feedback all the time. Um, that, that he motivates them and inspires them. And that's truly the stuff that you really appreciate. You know, it's, it's not the easiest thing to put yourself out there of, oh, what am I doing? And this is what I do for this and X, because at the end of the day, like, who the F am I to, to, to yeah, exactly. say to people that, or are they going to listen, you know? Because you know, no, no, we're, we're humble. We're, we're both, you know, from small towns, me and Guy and whatnot. We don't like putting ourselves out there. But, uh, you know, hopefully people, people see the content, they get inspired, and they give you that feedback. It's like, all right, right on. So for every asshole that, you know, gives you a sideways comment or, or DMs you something stupid, you know, you got plenty of people that are saying, oh, wow, you know, can you keep putting stuff out? You know, it helps me out so much. And that's truly great. And hopefully people take more advantage of that and uh, they get to see what all these different bodybuilders are truly doing. I mean, all the guys that are going to O2 gyms now. They're always posting up, you know, what crazy variation or what exercise they're doing. So it's all good stuff. Everybody has a lot of opportunities now. Um to learn things um and i hope they take advantage of it and i hope that they've been able to learn something from the conversation we've had today a little bit about me obviously a lot about the company a little bit about some ingredients and some supplements so i think it's a great thing that you're doing sean i really appreciate you uh 
you having me on today for sure. Rich, it's definitely been a pleasure. As things wind down, I know you've got some business to attend to. Once again, let people know, let the listeners know where they can follow you and, and Apollon and everything else. Yeah, absolutely. So um, my Instagram is just Rich Vellucci. Um, uh, the Apollon Nutrition, A P O L L O N Nutrition uh, dot com. You can order any of our products. We have gear. We're always doing discount codes. We're absolutely going to do a promotion. Um, I think, Sean, we're going to pr- uh, post um, a, a graphic, and we're, we're kind of going to do the standard, probably tag somebody like this, something like that, where we're going to give you guys some free product out, probably give out a hooligan and enigma Great. Um, to a couple of people. Um, so we'll, we'll organize those details, Sean, when we get off the phone. We'll post post that. But definitely check out our Instagram page, apollonutrition.com, or at Apollo Nutrition for, for Instagram, apollonutrition.com to order. Um, and we'll give you guys the details about how we can give you guys some giveaways so you can try the two products that we highlighted here today. Um, and, and definitely uh, check us out. You know, we got a lot of great flavors, got a lot of great ingredients. Please do your research uh, before you buy anything. We want you to be confident and uh, knowledgeable, and, and that's the demographic we want. And so you try our products, and then you can tell our friends. That's how we've grown to date, and that's how we continue to plan to grow is that we, we do right by the people who buy our products so that they refer us. Uh, to their friends and family with confidence. Perfect. Well, much thanks to Rich for his time on behalf of Apollon Nutrition. Be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes, Podcast Garden, and YouTube. Additionally, subscribe to our Facebook page where we have great articles, news, and, of course, contests. Train hard, train smart, and make it a great day. Thanks so much.